Hey there, Toon Supply crew. It's Mari Black from Boston, Massachusetts, and I am thrilled to be here to share a tune with you today. Um, the tune I'm going to play is actually one that I wrote. It's a little jig I like to call Exhale, and I call it that because it sounds like the musical equivalent of a great big and I think we can all use a little bit of that these days. So um, I'll play it for you so you can hear how it goes and enjoy and breathe. And then I'm actually going to slow it down, break it down a little bit to show you how it goes. And then we can play it all together, which is how these tunes are meant to be done anyways. So here it is. This is Exhale. That's how it goes, and if you want to grab your instrument and join me, I'd love to show you how this thing is put together, and uh, then we can share a musical exhale as a uh, as a internetly connected tune family. I gotta work on the marketing, but I do believe that's what we have become now. All right, so here I am. I'm in D major, two sharps, F and C. And uh, I'll play the A section slowly for a second. I'll actually take the ornaments out so it gets really clear what the melody is. Two, three, and... rewind this video and just play it slowly with me uh, a few times and get it but if it helps break it down a little bit I like to think of my fiddle tunes within a section there are parts of course that repeat so I have the part one there's a part two part one comes back with a little variation and there's an ending part one <laughs> catchy hook thing that happens a lot. I'm just going down the D major scale. But I'm putting in a little D in between. Try that part one with me one more time. Up the arpeggio, down the scale with the little, uh, well it's a string crossing if you're a stringed instrument. It's a looping down to the low D, the root, if you're uh, accordion or flute or something cool of that sort. Ready? And yeah, and when I land on that E, that's the beginning of part two. Do part one one more time. D major. Nice. So now we start this little E minor part. Hint to you quarters out there that I'm calling the melody in terms of the chords. I said 
I take my ornaments out, but there's one little one in there that helps make it make sense, right? <laughs> essentially a little 2-5-1 chord progression E minor up the scale now here there's my A major my A7 that's the five chord cool so let's do that little 2-5 E minor E up the scale little scoop A major Good, do it again, two, five, E minor. A major. Nice, so now part one would come back. In some tunes, part one repeats exactly, of course. In exhale, the A section, when part one comes back, it's a little variation. So it's still D major. Yeah, so I'm in my upper D arpeggio now. up at the end that little A major arpeggio that's part of the variation so let's try it again here's my higher D arpeggio it's mixed up a little bit and now down the scale to A major that's the soaring part that makes you feel like you're exhaling this is essentially the exhale of exhale let's try it one more time you go and the ending is actually the easiest part I'm starting on my B and now I'm gonna go to my D up the scale down the scale and land on D do it one more time ending A section, here's part one, the D major arpeggio with the little string crossing scale. D major cross it. Here's the two five, part two, E minor. Scoop it. A major, one variation. this video and I'll be happy to practice with you as many times as you like over and over we'll just keep exhaling together all right you ready for the B section as you listen to it I'm gonna play it through slowly um, listen and try to play along with me see how much you can pick out you'll also hear as with many tunes some material that seems familiar from the A section so anything you recognize that should help you play it I get two pickups Chromatic scale. 
So see if you can find that on your instrument. For us string players, we're gonna slide high two, low two, back to one down the scale. It's the Looney Tunes sound of falling off a cliff, right? <laughs> that was a little more dramatic than it needed to be. Part, uh, part one of the B section, string across the scale. Go down the scale, little chromatic. Yeah, one more time. And uh, cross it. Nice. Now here's part two. So that's another part that sounds fancy because of the rhythm, but it's actually just a little tie. I have a G major arpeggio. That starts on the third, right? Third, fifth. See how I do that? G major arpeggio. Cross to A, stay down the scale, up the scale. Do you see that? One more time with me, G major arpeggio. B, cross A, stay down and up. Now we're back to part one. No chromatic here. Ooh, yeah. So when part one comes back, it's almost the same, but we don't do the little chromatic. We have to get ready for the ending. So. Skip it and land on your B. One more time. I would call this probably a part one prime. Right? Like, it's mostly part one, but it changes a tiny bit at the end there. One prime. And here we are at the ending, which guess what? You already know from the A section. Up the scale, down the scale, D. Is that familiar? Do it again, ending. You got it. Ready to put the whole section together? Part one, string crossing scale. Here's the chromatic. G major, B cross, A, stay, down and up. Back to part one, but it's one prime. No chromatic and ending that you already know. Repeat it. When you get to part one prime, I like to play a little variation. Rather than just going down the scale, which we've heard many times, I'm going to change it a tiny bit. I'm going to keep the same scale, but instead of crossing the string, I'm going to give each a little neighbor tone. It's such a subtle switch, but it makes a big difference. Do you notice that? This is an upper neighbor, by the way. So if I have the A, my upper neighbor, of course, is B. And here's G with an upper neighbor. And I'm back like normal. Ending. Do one more B section and we'll treat it like the last time with that little neighbor variation, ready? Part one is normal. Um, and almost improvisatory, like I'm making up um, little flourishes, we got to put some decorations in. Now this is one of my favorite things to talk about, and those of you who play these styles, um, you explore ornamentation all the time, and you're always looking for new ways to ornament, same like me. Um, I actually teach a whole class online about ornaments, I call it dress up your tunes, and we do, we do grace notes, and we do coming up with little variations, like that neighbor tone variation, and these are the things that make your tunes special and interesting and individual, while still keeping the tune very much recognizable. So, 
Exhale is built to ornament because it has all those long notes. And every time you have a long note, that's a great moment to decorate. Now I use, because this is an Irish style jig, I like to use a lot of rolls here. Now you guys probably know your rolls really well. If you're new to it, a roll always works where you take the note that you're trying to decorate, you take a note above it, go back to the note, below and then back to the note. Note above, note below, note. And it makes this little whoop. That's how we mark it in the music, right? That little, it looks almost like a little infinity sign or something on its side. Just not quite complete. All right, so any of those long notes you can roll. Right? Also, another great way to ornament notes that are not super long is to add a little hammer-on, which you guys probably know all about. I like to do it here. And a hammer-on is a single grace note below. So if I normally wanted to do this D, instead of just landing right on the D, I land on the note right under it and then lean into the D and that's what a hammer-on does. It gives you a leaning gesture, which is really great for a tune that's called exhale and is designed to make you feel like, ah, oh, because it's the sound of relaxing into that melody note. All right, so let's just explore here really quickly and we'll play through the tune slowly and I want to see if you can find how many places you could roll a really long note or hammer and lean into um, any of the notes. The longer the note, the more time you have to do it. Here we go. Play with me. Two, three, A section. How about a roll? How about a hammer on? for you to get really individualistic with where you put your ornaments and where you come up with little variations. I told you my favorite, the little neighbor variation at the end of the B, but you could do it other places too, right? Like sometimes rather than just crossing once, I like doing that. Now cross back. that the crossback variation how original so little touches like that will really expand the tune put more breath into it I love hearing when people explore with any tune especially ones that I happen to be lucky enough to to write or to capture and so please have at it and uh, when I see you hopefully in person when it's safe we can play it together and hopefully we'll play it many times together digitally on this video uh, and stay tuned to Tune Supply for more great tunes from more great players. And if you want to learn more tunes from me, you can check out my YouTube series called The Tune of the Month that's been running for, wow, several years now where I teach tunes just like this in all different styles that are all my favorites and I hope will be your favorites too. And uh, you can come find me for classes online as well as in person whenever we get back to that. Thanks guys. Have a great day.